it's interesting that my first video for, with this new camera is for a movie that's named after a type of camera. And yes, I have a new camera, if you've noticed, um, the lens is much wider, the volume is thankfully much louder. Um, it just keeps doing this thing where the focus keeps adjusting. I don't know if I can fix that, but for now we'll have to live with it, I guess. But anyway, here we go. Super 8 is written and directed by J.J. Abrams and stars Joel Courtney, Elle Fanning, Kyle Chandler, and Riley Griffiths. And Super 8 is set in the 80s, I believe, um, where you have this group of six kids who really enjoy making their own movies. Um, and one night, they're filming next to a railroad track when they witness this train just derail, cause this huge explosion, and then this thing manages to escape from the train's cargo and begins terrorizing their town. And the reason why I'm talking about Super 8 today is because last year for May the 4th, Star Wars Day, I talked about THX 1138, which was George Lucas's first film. But because Star Wars The Force Awakens is coming out later in December, I wanted to talk about something J.J. Abrams did the sci-fi as, as well. And I know he did the awesome Star Trek reboot, but I wanted to talk about this one. And I really, really enjoyed watching Super 8. I think the ending is just off for me, but overall I think the visuals and the audio are just incredible, and I think the cast of young actors in its very center are just great. First of all, the visual effects in Super 8 are just excellent. The, the main creature in this movie like looks really, really great. But what I love so much about the visual effects here is that the effects are actually enhanced by the cover of darkness. You know, they don't use darkness to obscure um, the visuals here. In fact, I think it really just adds to like the mood and the personality of it all. But there are a lot of practical effects in the movie like makeup and like, just the general destruction and stuff. And it's very, very realistic, refreshingly enough for like a movie about kids. I mean, you'd expect a movie about kids to kind of go halfway with the violence, but this movie is actually pretty violent. The sound is also just as impressive and intense in the movie, like during the whole train sequence, like the sound is just so loud, but like in a really good way, you really feel like you're in there. But they also know in this movie when to keep things quiet to really increase tension, especially during the scary moments. And Michael Giacchino's score for the movie really re reminded me of the old school like blockbuster music, like the, the kind of music that really played the adventurous themes really well, but they also played like the sentimental themes really well. And the editing by Marianne Brandon and Mary Jo Markey, for me, was really effective in making a lot of the scares like really, really well effective. You know, they are jump scares, but you know, they really lingered on the shock after the scare, so it didn't ruin the pacing at all. And the editing also manages to achieve balance among the characters. Um, you know, you have Joe, played by Joel Courtney, you have Alice, played by Elle Fanning, you have Joe's dad, played by Cal Chandler. You really get all their points of view kind of equally. But what I like so much about Super 8 is that deep down it's really all about the characters and the relationships with each other. This group of kids in the center of it all is just so well written. They're so believable in that, you know, they swear a lot, um, they just insult each other all the time, but you can tell they're friends, you know, you, you can really feel like that kinship uh, among them. So the dialogue is really realistic in that regard. And it's also really funny. This movie is very funny even during like the intense moments because the kids are just so likable and like the situation is just bonkers for them. So they really kind of add levity to a lot of the moments. Um, and I really do think the script manages to really explore its themes of friendship and family, as well as even like putting things there about filmmaking. And in terms of actors, uh, they're all really, really great. Um, for one, the lead, Joel Courtney, who plays Joe, he's a really great kind of emotional lead. And it really surprised me because kids in movies are usually really annoying, but he wasn't whiny at all. He wasn't annoying or anything. He really gave a very kind of nuanced performance. And someone else who gave a nuanced performance who I was really surprised by was Elle Fanning, um, who, you know, I was surprised where her character went because she's the only girl in the group, but she really played it very, very subdued, and I really like that about her. Um, Cal Chandler was also very good and nuanced as well. Everyone here was nuanced, um, but he also did well during, like, the more action-y scenes. Um, and then you've got Riley Griffiths, who plays Charlie, who is Joe's best friend. He's just hilarious. He steals so many scenes here because he's just, he's like the director and whatnot. He just keeps shouting and whatever, and it's great. Um, and what I love so much about J.J. Abrams as a director is that he really uses sci-fi aspects to really deepen characters and strengthen the relationships among them. That's what his Star Trek movie was about. And I really hope it translates to The Force Awakens later this year. Um, he's such a kinetic director. Like, he really knows how to move the camera around and find like different points of action, but he really keeps it focused on the characters in the story, and I think that's really, really impressive. And he also knows how to stage horror very well. Like I really hope he makes like a just straight horror movie after Star Wars because he's really good at it. As for flaws I have with the movie, I have a few in the sense that, um, for one, this is literally the only J.J. Abrams movie where I'm distracted by the lens flare. I actually think it takes away from the cinematography from Larry Fong, which I think is really good on its own. You know, it's very kind of gritty. It has like that sheen about it, 
but I think the lens flare just completely distracts. They come in like times when there's like nothing to make a lens flare. Um, there are some jokes that the kids repeat, I think, a bit too much um, that I think would have been funnier if they just kept it kind of down low sometimes. Um, but for me, the bigger issue with the movie is that there's the, the conflict resolution that happens near the end doesn't really make any sense to me. Um, they try to make it way too sentimental as if, like, you know, these kids really kind of earned, like, the ending. But the way it ends just, I don't know, it, it doesn't feel like they really earned that. I can't really spoil it. Um, and for me, there really should have been kind of like a denouement after the ending, you know, like, um, just to, to further explore what happened to the characters after it ends, but it just kind of ends. But in the end, I would still say that Super 8 is a really good movie. Um, a lot of people will say that you'll enjoy this more if you're a fan of Spielberg's earlier uh, films, which this movie is trying to pay homage to. But, you know, I personally have not seen a lot of Spielberg's early work, honestly, um, but I still managed to enjoy it, so yeah. So those are my thoughts on Super 8. Have you guys seen it? What do you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, whether you agree with me or not, please leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation. Have a happy belated, I guess, May the 4th be with you.